Hello again. Welcome to That's English. Hello there. Oh. What's wrong with you, Annabelle? Oh, sorry. I've had a terrible morning. I got a flat tire. So I had to walk part of the way. Oh, sorry. No time to change. Hmm. Bright yellow isn't the best colour for you. Oh, Ashley, it's only my cycling clothes. Mm. You really love cycling. How long does it usually take you to get here by bike? Well, usually it's a very quick and reliable, viable method of transport. So it takes me about 20 minutes. It would take about 40 minutes by car. Do you know any shortcuts, atajos, to avoid the traffic? Yes, shortcuts are essential if you want to move around the city centre quickly, as we'll see in today's documentary. We'll look at the work of a bicycle courier. He delivers packages and documents all around London on his bike. And as you watch, look for the answer to this question. What three things can be annoying for a courier? <laughs> yes, things that can be annoying, molestas. Let's watch. He might not look very important, but without him, business life in London wouldn't work as well as it does. Traffic jams are a problem in most big cities. In the world of business, there isn't time to wait. Quick, reliable delivery can be vital in closing a business deal or in keeping a customer satisfied. The bicycle courier can avoid traffic jams and can travel more quickly in the city centre than cars, vans and motorbikes. He can stop right in front of his destination, run in, deliver the package, run out. In a few seconds, he is on his way to the next address. Hello, can I have a good bike, please? Dave Brown uses a bicycle courier every day for his business. It is the quickest and most reliable way of getting small items and documents across London. The bike courier is fast and cost-effective. This is ideal for the client. But what's it like for the courier? We spoke to Harry Walton, who works in central London. On the positive side, it's great to be outdoors, except when it rains. I love riding my bike, so to do it as a job is ideal for me. And it keeps me extremely fit. Pollution can be a problem. And then you have to be careful with motorists and people opening car doors without looking behind them. This job seems ideal for young people. You need to be very fit and you also have to know how to get around efficiently. We need to know the city very well, especially the shortcuts. I've done it for three years. Most people give up after five. They find an easier job. Our working day is very long. We start at nine and don't usually finish until six. Sometimes we don't even have time for lunch. And we are paid for each package that we deliver not a daily or weekly wage. Couriers typically cycle between 50 and 100 miles a day. And they carry a variety of items, such as legal documents, replacement parts for machines, even fashion samples. We usually use them for contracts and urgent documents. There are a few important things to consider if you are thinking about becoming a courier in a big city. Try not to get frustrated by the annoying parts of the job. For example, wrong delivery addresses, rude customers, He's not here. flat tires. And finally, if you don't love riding your bike, don't do this job. It is a hard job, and not one that is right for everyone. But one thing is sure. Bicycle couriers will stay in a central part of city centre life for a long time. So would you like to do that job, Ashley? Hmm, maybe, but only if I could use my motorbike. I'd know the city quite well. Hmm, actually, the people who probably know London best 
are the taxi drivers, or cabbies, as we call them. Right then, what's the answer to our question? What three things can be annoying for a courier? Let's see it one more time. There are a few important things to consider if you are thinking about becoming a courier in a big city. Try not to get frustrated by the annoying parts of the job. For example, wrong delivery addresses, rude customers... He's not here! ..flat tyres. So the answer is the annoying things are wrong delivery addresses, rude customers and flat tyres. Mm. And you should also be careful of people opening car doors without looking behind them. It's very important to warn cyclists about that. It can be very dangerous. Mm. In fact, warnings are the subject of our next section. We asked people from different countries this question. What warnings would you give to people visiting your country? Ah, this should be very useful. Mm, well, let's see what they said. I think anywhere you go, keep your valuables out of sight and don't have jewellery on show. If you're going to go up to the Highlands, leave it till the late autumn for two reasons. Uh, in the summer, there are midges, which are tiny little insects or bugs that bite, and they tend to die off at the beginning of September. And at the end of September, we often have an Indian summer, where, particularly on the West Coast, where actually it suddenly gets unseasonably warm, but all the midges have gone, and so have most of the other tourists. The only warnings I would give to people visiting Jamaica is be yourself. People can tell when you're pretending to be something else and just use common sense about where you go and what you do when you go to these places. Be alert. Take care of yourself. Don't stay out too late or ever be alone if you're travelling on your own. The biggest warning I'd say is probably to avoid maybe going into the bars because we'll get you very drunk. Be careful of the wildlife. We do have a lot of dangerous spiders and snakes, um, so... Usually it's OK, but if you do leave your shoes outside at night time, just shake them out before you put them on. You never know what could be in it. Wow. Imagine finding a snake or a poisonous spider in your shoe. I don't think they'd stay long in your shoes, Ashley. Very funny, Annabelle. And now it's time for That's Britain. In today's episode, Nigel visits the seaside town of Brighton. Mmm, Brighton has lots of attractions. There's the Brighton Pavilion, the beach, the lanes and, of course, Brighton Pier. Ah, oh, yes, the pier, that very British seaside attraction. While you watch, find the answer to this question. What is the best way to get around in the lanes? <laughs> Today I'm in Brighton on the south coast of England. Like millions of people every year, I've come here by train to enjoy the sea, the beach and, hopefully, the weather. Most visitors come straight here to the beach. In summer, this beach is full of people, but at this time of year, they prefer to spend their time and money on Brighton Pier. It was opened in 1899 and provides cheap, popular entertainment. It's really easy to get around Brighton. One way is to cycle. I've stopped Sarah, a cyclist. So Sarah, how easy is it to cycle around here? In fact, it's incredibly easy. You can cycle all along the seafront as far as you can see. So, very right. simple. And quite safe? Very safe, in fact. So, how far is it from here to the next town? I would say two kilometres, and that takes me about ten minutes to cycle. Great. Thanks very much, Sarah. No problem. The buses are excellent here, too. They're very frequent, and they cover the whole of the city. So, let's go by bus to see Brighton Pier. <laughs> Here's 
Brighton Pier. It wasn't far at all by bus. I'm here with Neil, who knows all about Brighton Pier. Neil, what can you do on this pier? There are lots of things for you to do. We've got traditional seaside fish and chips, the best in the south. We've got beautiful ceramic views. We've got a fun fair with all the traditional rides. We've got dodgems and even a helter skelter. Today, millions of tourists, day trippers, and students come here from all over the world. Let's find out why. Hi there. Hello. Um, can I ask, what do you like best about Brighton? Oh, there are so many things I like about Brighton. It's the beach, the pier, the pubs, the social life. Everything's really nice here. Great, thanks very much. You're welcome. This is the hippie heart of Brighton, the lanes where you can buy interesting stuff, fashionable clothes, or drink a coffee with friends. The best way to get around here is to walk. You can spend hours walking up and down these streets, looking in shop windows. I'm gonna stay in the lanes for a while and have a cup of tea. Next time, I'm going to a pub in Beaconsfield. See you there. The pier is good fun, especially for young children and families. Yes, it's very traditional, very different to today's theme parks, and the fish and chips are delicious. <laughs> and there are lots of interesting little shops in the lanes. What about our question? What is the best way to get around in the lanes? Let's watch it again. This is the hippie heart of Brighton, the lanes where you can buy interesting stuff, fashionable clothes, or drink a coffee with friends. The best way to get around here is to walk. The answer is, the best way to get around there is walk. Oh dear, I've got to go. Uh, how are you going back home, Annabelle? I'll take the tube, the underground, and I'll have to leave my bike here. Maybe you could change the tyre for me, Ashley. Uh, sorry, I, I, I've got to go too, Annabelle. Well, that's it for today. We'll see you soon for the next That's English. Bye. 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 Oh.